Hello guys, this is Sushant. So welcome to your channel that is Sci Engineer. We have already uploaded videos for your basic electrical engineering and also for your engineering mechanics. So please do have a look at it. We have also a video on your understanding of complex numbers. So you can just have a look at that video to understand the basics of complex numbers. Because complex numbers is going to be one of the topic in your applied mathematics. In this video, we are going to see one topic in complex numbers, which is application of De Movius theorem. So people do share these videos with your fellow friends who are in their first year of engineering. Also these videos can be helpful for those guys who just want to have an understanding of the different topics and who just want to revise them. So hit those like button and if you are new to the channel please do subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell icon to get notifications of any new videos which will be uploaded. So let's get going. So as we said that we are going to start with a topic which is De Moivre's theorem. We are going to understand some of the applications of De Moivre's theorem. So before beginning, let us try to understand the De Moivre's theorem. It is nothing but this particular equation, which is if you have cos theta plus i sine theta, this thing is raised to n. Then by De Moivre's theorem, it will be equal to cos of n theta plus i sin n theta. So this is what the basic statement for De Moivre's theorem is, the mathematical statement for De Moivre's theorem. So let us see one of the applications of De Moivre's theorem, which is one of them is the expansion of the cos n theta or sin n theta in terms of the powers of cos or powers of sin. So this particular question can be asked in your exam. So what you need to do is you have to consider this particular equation which is your De Moivre's theorem. So what you will write is you will write it in a reverse fashion that is cos n theta plus i sin n theta will be equal to cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n. Now what you will be applying is the binomial expansion for this. Now the binomial expansion if you just recollect it is having the terms n c 0 of cos n theta. So it will be starting with this particular coefficient that is n c 0 into cos raised to n theta. So it is the first term raised to n plus it is going to be the second term that is going to be n c 1 cos of n minus 1. So basically you are going to decrease the degree of this term that is cos theta and you will start increasing the degree of the second term that is your i sin theta. Plus your next term will be nc2 cos of n minus 2 theta and i sin theta square. Similarly, you will have the next term as nc3 cos n minus 3 theta and you will be having i sin theta q. So you can go on expanding this particular expansion in the same way by increasing this number by decreasing the degree of the first term and by increasing the degree of the second term. So if you just expand that thing, then what you have to do is if it, it is asked that you have to find cos n theta, you will be collecting all the real parts. So before doing that, what you have to do is you have to see wherever there is a degree of i present. So in this case, you are having a i over here, which is a single i raised to 1. So you will write this as i. So this becomes one of the complex part of this equation. Next, you have this i square. Now you should know that i square value is minus 1. So this becomes the real part. Then you come for the next term which is going to be i cube and you should know that i cube term will give you a minus i. So this becomes a minus i term. That means it becomes a imaginary part of this. So if it was asked that you have to find the terms of cos n theta then you have to just equate the real parts. So equating the real parts you will get it as cos of n theta will be equal to 
the real parts are going to be this term that is nc0 cos of n th cos raised to n theta minus nc2 cos of n minus 2 theta sin square theta plus if you just go on expanding this is going to be nc4 cos of n minus 4 theta sin raised to 4 theta and so on. If it was asked that you have to find sin n theta then in that case you have to equate the imaginary parts. So your sin n theta terms will be the imaginary parts without the imaginary sign that is without the i sign. So it's going to be nc1 cos of n minus 1 theta sin theta minus nc3 because this becomes the second part of the imaginary number. So that's going to be minus nc3 cos of n minus 3 theta sin cube theta and so on. So this is how you will be finding the expansion for cos n theta or sin n theta. Let us say that we had been asked to find the expansion of cos 4 theta. So this becomes nothing but the de Morvan theorem written in the opposite fashion. So now expansion of this, so it's going to c0 cos raised to 4 theta function by binomial theorem is that this particular number should be increasing by 1 as you go ahead. This degree of the first term should be decreasing by 1 as you go ahead and the second terms degree should be increasing by 1 as you go ahead. So it will start from 0 then go for 1, 2, 3 and so on. So now what you have to do is you have to find which are going to be the real parts and which is going to be the imaginary parts. So basically you have to see the degrees of i to find out which is going to be the real and the imaginary part. So you can see that there is no i term in the first one so this becomes the real part. You can see that there is an i term which is present over here so that becomes the imaginary part over here. So whenever you are finding that it is imaginary you can write, you will rewrite this equation with the i in the front. Then you can see that this is going to be i square. You know that i square will be nothing but minus 1. So this again becomes a real part. Then you have this i cube. So i cube you should know that it becomes the minus i part. So this becomes the imaginary part and lastly you have the i raised to 4 which is nothing but 1. So since you have to find cos 4 theta, your cos 4 theta is the real part in this equation. So you will be equating the real parts. So your cos 4 theta will be equal to. Now you also need to substitute the values of this 4c0 and all that. You can either get it from the calci or you can just calculate using. So your 4c0 is going to be nothing but 1. So your first term is going to be cos 4 theta. So you can see that the second real part is from here. Your 4c2 has the value 6. So that's going to be cos square theta and sin square theta. And finally at the end it's 4c4 which is having the value 1. So it's going to be plus sine raised to 4 theta. So you will be getting this particular answer. If it was asked that you have to find what is going to be the sine 4 theta. So it's going to be nothing but the imaginary part. So it's going to be this particular term. Then it's going to be this particular term. So there are only two terms for your sign. So moving on to the next expansion for de Morvan's theorem, wherein you have to find the expansion for your sine raised to n theta and cos raised to n theta. So don't get confused. In the previous case, it was the multiple of the angle whose expansion we had to find, and in this case, it's the raised to the trigonometric function. So whenever this question is asked, you have to remember a couple of steps wherein you have to take a complex number which is x equals cos theta plus i sin theta. Now if you find what is going to be 1 by x, if you solve this, you will be getting this as cos theta minus i sin theta. So what you will be getting is if you do x plus 1 by x, that is you add these two, 
you will be getting this as 2 cos theta and if you subtract them that is x minus 1 by x you will be getting this as 2i sin theta so in the similar fashion if you wanted to find what is going to be x raised to n so your x raised to n is going to be cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n so that by de Moivre's theorem is going to be cos n theta plus i sin n theta so in the similar manner i can find what is going to be 1 by x raised to n so that's nothing but your cos n theta minus i sin n theta so if you add them again so it's going to be x raised to n 1 by x raised to n cos n theta so that is the only change which will be occurring and x raised to n minus 1 by x raised to n will be 2i sin n theta so once you have understood this particular steps you have to write them whenever you are solving it then what you have to do is if whatever is asked let us say if my sin n raised to n theta is asked then you have to consider the equation which is going to be x minus 1 by x equals 2i sin theta so whenever sin is asked you have to consider this equation whenever cos is asked you have to consider the other equation which is going to be x plus 1 by x equals 2 cos theta so depending on the question you will be going by either of them then after finding this what you have to do is whatever it is since it is raised to n you will be raising it to n so you will be raising this whole thing raised to n and this whole thing raised to n so this becomes 2 raised to n i raised to n sin raised to n theta and this you will be using your binomial expansion to find the term so let us take an example to understand more in detail what are the steps included in it so let us say it was asked to find cos raised to 7 theta so now since it is cos which is asked you will be taking the equation that is your 2 cos theta will be equal to x plus 1 by x so now since it is asked raised to 7 so you will be raising this to 7 so this becomes your 2 raised to 7 cos raised to 7 theta equals this becomes your binomial expansion so you will be having 7c0 x raised to 7 plus 7c1 x raised to 6 into 1 by x because you are decreasing the powers of the first term and increasing the power of the second term plus 7c2 x raised to 5 into 1 by x square so after applying your binomial expansion you will be getting these terms now you have to simplify it so what you can see is that there is x raised to 6 divided by x so that becomes x raised to 5 then this is my x cube which is going to be there then this becomes my x then this becomes 1 by x this will become 1 by x cube and this will become 1 by x raised to 5 then you can also find these terms so 7c0 is going to be 1 7c1 is going to be 7 so you will be finding these terms then after that what you have to do is you have to combine the terms so you'll, you have x raised to 7 you have 1 by x raised to 7 so you will be combining it together so after combining you will be having this thing as x raised to 7 plus 1 by x raised to 7 together then this is going to be plus you will be combining these two terms so you will be taking the 7 common so it's going to be x raised to 5 by 1 by x raised to 5 plus then you will be taking the 21 so it's going to be x cube plus 1 by x cube plus lastly it's going to be the 35 so it's going to be x plus 1 by x so after you have combined these terms what you can see is that this is x raised to n plus 1 by x raised to n so as in the earlier explanation we had seen that x raised to n plus 1 by x raised to n is nothing but 
2 into cos n theta. So in this case also this is going to be nothing but your 2 cos 7 theta. This is going to be 7 into 2 cos phi theta. This is going to be 21 into 2 cos 3 theta. And finally it's going to be 35 into 2 cos theta. So rewriting these terms you will be getting this particular equation. Now you have this 2 raised to 7 over here which you can bring it on this side. And when you bring it on this side you can take the 2 common from each term which gets cancelled with one of the 2's over here. So final answer you will be getting this as this whole thing divided by 2 raised to 6 with all the 2's gone inside it. So this is going to be your expansion for your cos raised to 7 theta. So as in this case we had been asked cos raised to 7 theta. They can also ask you sin raised to 7 theta. So in that case you have to take the other equation which is nothing but your 2i sin theta is equal to x minus 1 by x. So you will be raising this thing to 7 and then using again the binomial expansion you will be finding the terms which are present in it. While expansion of this you have to remember one thing which is x raised to n minus 1 by x raised to n should be written as 2i sin n theta. So we will be getting the terms of sin or cos within that expansion. So we are wrapping up with this particular video. Do let us know how did you find this particular video. Please do write in the comment section what more videos can we do for you guys. We will be uploading as many videos as we can for your topics related to your first year of engineering. Also we are going to upload videos on your JEE preparation for mathematics and physics as soon as possible. So do let your friends know about it. So this is Sushan from Samartha Vidya classes which is for engineering and science students. We conduct classes for your BE, BTech level and also for your diploma level students. We also conduct classes for the 11-12 PCMB group and also for the vocational students. We also prepare students for their engineering entrances. So if you want to know about us, please do visit our Facebook page. And also to contact us, you can use our email address that is samarthavidya at the rate gmail.com. Our class is just 5 minutes walkable from the Mullen station. We have a 10% discount for our first year of engineering student subscribers. So do spread the word as much as you can. So there are only limited seats available for this offer. So the new visitors do subscribe to our page and also hit the bell icon. Please do share our videos, please do like our videos and do comment on the videos. So thank you, keep watching, keep learning and happy learning. Bye.